summer of 2015, um, we, we were having a lot of problems with kids being um, out walking freely in, in, in Rockford in the summer. You know, a lot of single parent uh, households um, and that parent would be at work and the, the juvenile would be left at home. Um, these juveniles were breaking windows and causing, you know, other small, smaller offenses. And um, me and my partners put our heads together and we try to come up with an idea. What can we do to engage these kids? Officer Dillard here, who's one of my community service officers, who on his own uh, started Wiffle Ball Wednesday in a, in a park. Uh, and he just went, bought a wiffle ball and some wiffle balls and bats. And the first day, I think he, he got the word out he had four or five. The next week he had 40 or 50 kids. Procedural justice is the tactic. It is the way we do business. It's a tactic we use, the tactic of voice, uh, neutrality, respect, trustworthiness. And we do that in an attempt to gain legitimacy, which is the more important part of this. Okay, Procedural justice is the tactic. Legitimacy is how the public views us. This training is important to uh, the thousands of uh, line officers that are out on the street. From this training, they begin to understand what do they get back, and things they get back, safety, uh, compliance, cooperation, information, those kind of things they start getting back, less stress. And these are all things that are really important to law enforcement. By simply playing a wiffle ball with the kids in the neighborhoods, um, by throwing that football with them, by getting out and talking to them, utilize, having them help you pass out flyers, um, and just showing them that we are human beings uh, bridges that gap, you know, and, and the thing is it doesn't take a lot of work. Essentially, we practiced procedural justice when we did this course. So we listened to what they wanted, kind of addressed it, and gave it back to them. Uh, and then we um, used a kind of educational format, and we're having difficult conversations. It's taking a look at ourselves and what's going on with us, and we had to be open with that. And part of that was our cynicism. We had to look at our cynicism and talk about it. The veteran officer, myself included, you become very cynical. And personally, this class just seemed to kind of recenter me. I saw myself on the board yesterday, and I realized probably not the best mind state, and I need to get myself back together. One of the biggest things that hit home was, um, I would say, from a health benefit. You know, um, I, I deal with officers that have had heart attacks while on duty um, that are off because of health, um, stress, you know, high blood pressure. And, you know, to formulate things in a process that will make things easier or, you know, enable them to perform their job and not be so stressed out is definitely a benefit. This is career survival. This is, you know, fair and impartial policing, judicial procedure. It is career survival for the world we live in today. And unless you have a good basis of this training, you're not going to be a successful police officer. It's just the bottom line. I think this is a good way of rebuilding that community trust. It's a good way. Um, it is the future of law enforcement. Uh, we're changing the way we did business 10 years ago is different than we did business 20 years ago, which is different than we did business 30 years ago. You know, we need to be progressive. We need to keep up with the times. And I think this is launching us into that next level of professionalism.